the Cazador Eagle 200 golf cart. What up, too? It's your boy DJ, and I have a little new video here for you on my new golf cart that I bought. Actually, it's not so new. I bought it back in April, but I wanted to do an overall review of the actual golf cart itself. Plus, there's some stuff that I've been looking for online, which may be why you're here as well, that I can show you on where things are located. Um, I've had speedometer issues. I've had uh, the gear shifter issues with uh, the pulley system there. So I want to kind of show you a little bit about that stuff, show you how to get the golf cart apart um, and be able to get to the engine and change your oil, show you where the speedometer cable is because that was one of the big issues I've also seen other people look for. But overall, I want to give you a first uh, review of the golf cart. Uh, as you can see, I took the blue. Uh, I love that collar. It has red. It had gray. I think they had uh, about five or six different collars. It comes just like this if you do the assembly. Uh, it came out of Texas. Um, I will say this. When you get it, go through all your nuts and bolts because they just tightened enough to get it together. Uh, just like I said, the gear shifter was terrible. Uh, the mirrors are barely on. A lot of vibrations. Um, one thing I do want to say that I did is a little trip tip here is you know when you get an air conditioner you get this kind of stuff for your air conditioner i've been using this at uh, pressure points on here to slow the or to uh, muffle the vibration down uh put them here where the seat folds um they have some rubber ones on here but they were grinding down pretty much from the weight so i put two of those on there and now it actually uh is nice and uh quiet when we ride uh, as you can see, this is diamond plated. It turns into a bed if you want it to, or the two-seater golf cart there. Um, it has all the nice diamond plate down here. It comes with all the bells and whistles. You got your turn signals. You got your uh, headlights. You got your seat belts. You got your mirrors. You basically have every single thing to make it street legal. And I know this because to make the street legal, I had to go to the police station, have it uh, inspected. And then uh, got a registration, kind of like a boat a little bit. Uh, they give you a sticker put on so you're right in town here. Um, I currently reside in Indiana, as you probably see here, but I'm moving to Florida, which is why I bought this golf cart. Uh, you know, down there in Florida, it's going to be about $2,000, $3,000 more than if I was to buy it from up here. Um, so anyway, I wanted to go through that and show you guys a little bit else about the golf cart. Um, as far as the golf cart goes, it is very, very nice. Uh, I love the look of it. Uh, it drives well. Um, it's it's kind of comfortable. Um, I, I'm 6'1", and it's a little short for me, but it's not too bad. So if you're under 6 foot, it's going to be really nice for you. If you're over 6 foot, uh, it's a little bit cramped right there behind the, behind the steering wheel and the pedal and stuff. Um, I've done some modifications to it as well. I want to show you guys a little bit of that. Uh, put in a sound bar, and, and then there's also uh, some other stuff I want to get into with you guys as well. Okay, so overall golf cart, this is aesthetically pleasing, I think. I love the look of it. It's a very good-looking golf cart. Um, as far as the driving it, though, I will say that it is very loud. I do not like that. Um, I actually, it's the only thing I hate about it, to be honest with you. It's very loud. It is gas-powered. The engine is under there. And it's geared extremely uh, high, so basically uh, you can it, it can uh, go up hills and, and, and haul all four people and stuff like that. So it's got a high whine to it from being in such a low gear. Like kind of, it runs probably around twelve thousand RPMs, where you wish it would run around six thousand RPMs, so it didn't you know give it that whine. That really really sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, it's almost a game breaker. Uh, I want to see if anybody out there has any ideas on how to get that to run quieter. Anybody knows uh, any kind of dealers or something that could change the gearing in it. Because I will tell you, if you buy this, it would drive you nuts. You'd have to yell to talk. And you'd have your sound bar extremely loud to listen to music. So the only thing I hate about it is that. That is a big thing. I'm not going to lie about it. That is huge because, I mean, you're driving. That's what the golf cart does. Um, so I want to get into a little bit about um, the golf cart now, about how you take it apart and some different things. So first I'm going to show you here. It comes with a hood right here. It's really the tool knobs that just, you turn them here, you pull this little hood off, and you got a battery right here. Uh, you got uh, basically all your uh, sirens, your relays and everything. I took out the, the rear end or the backup beeper because it was absolutely annoying. 
it's right here. I took it off, got rid of that. Also wiring up the stereo, I'll get that when I get the uh, camera and I actually show you guys that here in a few, but this is nothing. There's nothing, your engine's not under here, but I did want to show you that. I'm going to put the hood over here. Now here's a trick. Okay. There's, there's three pins to pull this thing apart. Okay. So, well, first let me do this. The seat comes up and then the seat, you got your motor here and stuff, which I'll grab and show you here in a minute. You got a nice, nice bin right here. Uh, keep your paperwork, your registration, your insurance. Got a little bit, little toolkit in it and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty nice little storage area. The otherwise, the engine, you sit right on top of it, which is why it's so loud. And then there's three pins that take this back end off. Yes, this back end comes off, and it's only held on my three pins. Vibrates to be the Dickens. Okay, so, and I will get here and show you this, but you've got two pins with cotter pins in them. They'll go under here, and I'll show you in a minute. You take those two out, and then where there would be like a hitch, and down here at the bottom, there's a pin where you would like, if you had a, like say this wasn't here, and then go down, and it was like a UTV, you could put a, a ball on it and stuff, it goes right there. So when you take that apart, this thing slides off. It's got a couple hooks up there that just hook that way. So really all you do is you just kind of pull it, like this and really it's a two-man kind of deal which you can do with one just be very careful because of the wiring to the lights and stuff you'll stretch it you might break it so what I would do is just kind of gradually bring her down and hopefully I don't break any while I'm doing this okay I'm gonna let it sit right there so this is how it comes off and this is how you can get down to your engine I'm gonna grab the phone right now or the camera, sorry, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show you the parts here and show you exactly what I'm talking about on how to do all this stuff. But as you can see, hoods off, seats off, the back end's off. This is how you take apart the golf cart to service it. Now let's take a look at the actual uh, components and some other stuff that I've done here. Okay, coming up here to the hood where I told you guys, as you see, here's your battery. You got your brake fluids in right here. You got your horn down there and stuff. Now, if you notice here, I bought a Boss Audio soundbar. I've got the video on here on my page on how to install that. Ran the wire down here, ran it up and through here, and I showed how to do all that so you can see that. Now, one thing I just did recently is there's a hole here in the dash with a rubber uh, grommet in it. So what I did was, because you have to put a switch in otherwise you drain your battery, what I did was I took that little grommet out, and it looks purple, but we colored it black. Yeah, it actually is purple on here, but uh, that's actually what it looks like. It's pretty nice. Uh, got a big old washer and stuff. You can get whatever you want. But I ran that grommet. I took that grommet out, and that switch came in there, and I put that washer in there. And really, that's what it looks like. It's more black. So you can turn your... Uh, your speaker on and off just like that so anyway i wanted to show you guys that that was one nice little trick i did for the for the audio there okay coming around the side here where i talked about when you lift up the uh the actual seat there's the bin i was talking about you can keep everything in here here is the engine you're sitting on and that's why it's so daggum loud and unfortunately there's nothing like i said you can do about it if you guys know anything to do about it, please let me know. There's really nothing here that you can do. Everything's back here when you take the back off. All right, so the first thing is those two pins I told you about. Okay, see, I started rubbing that wire. I got to watch that. Okay, so there's a pin there and directly on the opposite side over there. And then these little hooks right here go right there around this plastic so they just kind of butt up against it it vibrates to be all kinds but there's nothing much you're going to do i'm going to try wire tying it to keep it maybe tighter because you really can't put any padding around the cotter pin otherwise it won't fit in there and then lastly let's see if i can get the phone down in here down here this is where you take the other pin out if you'll notice that pin and then down there is where it goes in and i'll give you a close-up once more of those pins that's all it is. Those three pins, that takes that out. Now, the two things I've had problems with were the gear shifter. And she's still a little bit, but as you can tell, neutral, reverse, I've got it all fixed. 
Now there's a pulley system. There's a pulley there, an identical pulley. Let me move the seat belt. Identical pulley. Where are you at, bud? I think I covered it up there. Sorry. Right there. Um, hose is in the way there. All right, so if you can see, let me try to focus there. So these two lines right here are the pulley, right? And it just goes around, around that pulley right there. So what happened was when they did it, they just tightened those up enough to get it tight. So this thing was completely loose. So I went in reverse and it wouldn't shift to, to forward. So I had no service on it. Like the guy, the company I bought it off of, they suck. Birds in Anderson, Indiana. Yeah, I'm shouting you out because you guys suck. Um, they didn't give me any service, help, nothing. I had to figure this out myself. So pulley coming in, pulley coming out. I had to tighten that up. Once I figured that out, all you got to do is tighten these up and you can adjust the slack in it and all that good stuff between there and there. And that fixed the gear shift. Now, the other problem I've had is it comes with a complete digital speedometer here. As you can see, fires right up. Everything looks good. It's got your gas. It's got your turn signals. It's got everything like that. That works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Now, the problem with that is not running up any miles now some of you guys might thought, think that's a problem but if you're going to trade it in you've only got 198 miles on it like i do and you've had it for two years they're going to ask questions so basically i asked i called casador and asked them where is the speedometer the speedometer is right there it goes up and connects and they said it's like a coaxial cable and i used to do coax on it like a BNC connector right there. So I'm going to take it out because what it looks like it does is it looks like it just goes right in side the actual, um, oh shoot, sorry about that. So where it connects inside there, it looks like it goes right into the differential. And that's how it does the speed instead of actually doing it on either tire. So it looks like it was right in the differential. I'm gonna have to try to pull that out and see if something's wrong, but that speedometer actually will work and it'll stop, it'll work, it'll stop. It's it's annoying and it actually has not worked for a while. So that's an overview of taking it apart, a little bit of what I did speaker wise and all that stuff. Sorry I'm out of breath, I'm fat and old. So how about I fire this thing up and we go take it a drive and I'll show you about how loud it is and all that good stuff. All right, guys, as you can see, it's all back together. And I'm going to show you those pins I was talking about. So I got on, I will tell you, it's a lot easier to get on than this off by here. That sounds weird. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to take off than it is put back on. So there's one pin, and then, like I said, those hooks go around there. And then there's the pin that goes in that hitch. And mirrored on the other side is another pin. So it's, it's a pain in the butt to do by yourself, but... It is definitely doable. Now let's take this thing for a ride and I'll show you how loud it is. All right, so first things first, when you start this, you have to push the brake and this pedal in or touch at the same time. So make sure it's in neutral, of course, and give a little guess. Sometimes she's running cold. Yeah, you know, so everything's firing up. I'm still haven't looked at my speedometer yet, but I will tell you this, if I learn how to fix it, I will do a video. All right, now as you can see, I got a little thing right there. Um, I have a magnet on the back of this there. And we're gonna go for a little ride. Hopefully the wind doesn't bother too much because I want you to hear how loud this thing actually is when it runs. All right. When you hear already, you can tell it's gas fired. You can hear the engine. It's not bad like this. And the speedometer is still not working. I saw I take it apart. If I get that fixed, I will do a video though. All right. We're gonna go down the road here and I'll show you what's up. So you hear the deep, loud roar of the engine there. You hear it whining like a high pitch. So full speed. Around about 8,000. 
4 p.m. I was wrong. About 26 mile an hour, and that's been on reward. Hopefully, you can hear it. Got my turn signal on. Car's coming. I'll turn that off so the beat don't bother you. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's it just whines and hums. Alright, so we're gonna go back down the road down here. And I'll get a full file again. Unfortunately, I mean that's the only bad thing about this. Everything else is great. It's pretty comfortable to ride. Um, it drives nice, very good suspension. It looks amazing. I mean, it's, a, it's an aggressive looking car. But like I said, man, once she end up at top speed, It actually doesn't vibrate like your hands or anything though, like it sounds like it might. Unfortunately, it's a hog. I don't know how it's... I haven't heard it yet and done editing. But, uh... I will tell you when I go back and edit the video to put it on YouTube if, uh, if it came through or not. It's all with the wind satellite. But it's uh, definite, definite wind there from the gearing. Back home now. I'm gonna throw this shut off, emergency brake, and turn it off there. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give it a like and subscribe, and stay tuned uh, for further videos on this as I find out more. Uh, I'm gonna go inside and edit this, and then also I'm gonna take a look at this speedometer cable, see if I can't get the speedometer working. So, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and uh, we'll catch you next one. See ya.